please join with me in consciousness? We know that God is all there is. God is love. God is abundance. God is peace. God is adventures. I know that every bit of me is God and all the qualities of God are mine. And what is true for me is also true for everyone who is here and everyone who is in this community and wants to be here. I know that these adventures sometimes show up differently, but they make us grow and make us better. I know this to be true, and I thank the universe, and I release this prayer in the law of mine, and please join with me in saying, and, and so, so it is. is. Did you have a demonstration to share? Oh, demonstration. I have a demonstration. Okay. Yes. Um, I went to, uh, uh, I've never done this before, but I went to the, uh, uh, it's actually every two years, the annual, or the biannual U.S. Army Ranger Regiment uh, meeting in uh, Fort Benning, Georgia. Oh my goodness. And so, you know, I'm a former Army Ranger. And um, it was quite an experience that week to meet Rangers from World War II met one that was 96, who had been in Merrill's Marauders, who had driven himself in his own big Lincoln sedan from New York to, to Fort Benning, Georgia, all by himself. Met a lot of really, really wonderful people. And of course, what the particular job that I had back then, a long time ago, in the 60s, um, as an Army Ranger, uh, it's wonderful to see the young men that are doing it now, and it's, they're very positive what they're doing. They're getting stuff done through the world, throughout the world, and a lot of stuff you never even hear about in the news. But all of a sudden, some bad people are not there anymore. <laughs> or some people get their water turned on that maybe got turned off. You know what that story is. So um, I never just... I had some mixed feelings about going to it, but I'm so, so glad I did. Um, and it really opened me up to a sense of history. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, being a, a, a former warrior, uh, warriors are necessary, you know, unfortunately in this world. But uh, the demonstration was, I would say, is that I really came to accept myself and all the things that I've had to do. And I got to uh, meet some really, really wonderful guys. Um, one of them was 96. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there was actually three or 400 more. But anyway, so I never thought I'd have that demonstration, and I did, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you for your opening prayer. You know, I'm one for affirmations, and um, I just wanted to share a little thing with you. I received a uh, booklet from the Unity, uh, Unity, and uh, it was Return to Wholeness, and there's a little bit of thing here about affirmations. I love affirmations. I use affirmations all the time, because affirmations, uh, when you continue to repeat them, it changes the, your consciousness. It puts the um, puts these positive good thoughts into your subconscious subjective mind, uh, and it pushes out the ones that you don't want. So I'm I'm a big fan of affirmations, and and I'm going to read a little bit about this because there's a you know you could, if you could make an affirmation and say um, I will be healthy, I will be um, happy, I'm going to be or I don't want to um, have black in my life. That is not an affirmation, because the universe doesn't hear that. It only hears the positive. It, hear, it hears the word lack, so you return it around. So it says, uh, what are affirmations? Affirmations are a concise and positive statement of a new future unfolding in your life. Affirmations are the tool used by millions of people from professional athletes to school-aged children, and th these are all to transform their life. 
When you are clear, when you clear out the old habit or a change of behavior, affirmations help to ensure the vacuum that you have created is filled with new things that you desire rather than more of the old patterns and the old false beliefs. So there are four examples, they have four tips. So the I am, the I am, what do you say after you say I am? I am tired, I am short, I am you know, hot, uh, I am nervous, I am anxious. What do you say after I am? Because you're affirming who you are. So I am the one, I am, is the most powerful statement of focus for your beliefs and it funnels the power of the universe on your behalf. The words that follow I am are going to be seared into your consciousness and help you manifest in kind. So I am strong and resilient, okay? And then it's gotta be positive. I am vibrant, I am healthy, I am whole. I am beautiful and I am balanced. Then we sometimes do not even see how our negative thoughts are embedded into our lives. Be careful if you find yourself affirming, I don't let things get me down or I overcome everything. You might be subconsciously affirming your struggle. So that's why in, uh, in affirmations and when we do affirmative prayer, just like uh, Patrick just opened the service for us, that's why we always state it in the present moment. It's not anything in the future and it's always exactly what you want. It's focused, okay? So try affirmations, they're great. All right, and now I am so anxious to hear what Dave Friedman has to say about, what do you mean, no? <laughs> Welcome, Dave. Good evening. Good evening, Dave. How you doing? Thanks for coming out. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. Better than sitting in traffic, right? Better than start sharp stick in the eye any day. I am. I am. Yes, you are. Take a minute. Go catch a movie or something? <laughs> nah, I'm good. Thanks. Maybe next time. What do you mean, no? <laughs> On one hand, it doesn't matter. There are, there is no right or wrong answer. On the other hand, it doesn't matter. It is the answer you gave. The idea, though, like everything we do, is to act consciously and on purpose, respond, don't react, know why you're saying it, and then be okay with it. Back in the day, when I had little ones, I started to realize that my automatic answer was no. <laughs> hey, Daddy, can we? No. Dad, you want to? No. Hey, can I? No. And I, I, I started to become aware of that. So just with a little bit of awareness, I was able to modify it. I still said no, but now I meant it. <laughs> when somebody asks you if you want to do something, what is your immediate knee-jerk reaction? Yes. Not no. It's all over the place, right? And when you find yourself saying no, what are you really saying no to? that you're actually saying yes to something else? Let's look at this for a minute. <laughs> you say no, say for instance, I'm going to say no to this thing falling over. <laughs> you say no to going out to drinks. 
Are you actually saying no to getting cleaned up, spending the money, going to a loud place with lots of frenetic energy? Or are you saying yes to staying in, being by yourself, recharging, reading, writing, cleaning out the socks, cat sock drawer? <laughs> it's a small difference, but I'm suggesting that we change our mindset to say yes to life and watch that become the life of our choosing. So what do you mean, no? Before you say no, pause. Think just a second. Is there something in there that could possibly be an opportunity for growth? Hmm, she says. I'll get back to that in a minute. You just heard that the universe doesn't understand no. It doesn't get the negative. So whatever you say no to, it actually hears yes. It, a lot of that has to do with, it gives you what you are focused on. You pray fervently that you want no traffic. And the universe gives you plenty of traffic. That's what you're feeling. There's a charge around that idea. I don't want traffic. Be careful how you word things. Maybe you could say, I want a clear, swift ride with just a few other cars. I like to be picky and play with the phrases. I, I make a game of it. It also helps me be very clear about what I want. Rosa Parks did not say no to getting off the bus. She said yes to a, um, personal freedom and equal treatment. Those immigrants with their many wildly creative and life-threatening ways that they take to get here are saying yes to a new vision, to a new life, to freedom, to peace. These people stow away in the holds of ships, hang out in the cargo holds of airplanes, swim from Cuba. They are experiencing the same thing as the bud does when it just decides it's more painful to stay a bud than it is to risk blooming. Or the caterpillar who inherently knows it's really time to get out of this very small room. They don't know what's next, but they do know one thing, not this. So think for a moment in your own life. Is there a situation going on with you right now that you may He's starting to feel like it's getting a little bit confining. So say to yourself, I don't know what's next, but not this. What all these things have in common is that they're saying yes to life, making a conscious decision to grow and expand and experience a dream scenario for real. Granted, whenever your personal vision is, it's probably not the risk at all life and death situation of finding your way to a new life in another country. But all the little choices that we make are the bricks that we are used to create the life we're building for ourselves. And is the life you're living the one you've envisioned? From Ernest Holmes, Sermon by the Sea, find me one person who is for something and against nothing, who is redeemed enough not to condemn others, condemn others out of the burden of his soul, and I will find another Savior, another Jesus, an exalted human being. For something, against nothing. I've been hearing some time about the benefits of cutting out, or at least cutting back on sugar, at least processed sugar. I finally kind of decided that I thought I might be open to maybe trying to experience <laughs> what I heard was some of the good things that maybe come from this slight diet modification. So I went for it, sort of. <laughs> I got so focused on not eating sugar that I was drawn to sweets like moth to a light. <laughs> I found myself going out of my way just to find it every step of the way. Mm. Right? 
and of course to eat all manner of deliciously satisfying, sweet, tasty, and moderately addicting, sugary goodness. <laughs> Should I share with you some of the bourbon butter chocolate truffle ice cream I found? Ooh. Right? So I'm finally making some progress in my experience, or my experiment to reduce sugar in my diet. What I did different was I stopped saying no to sugar. What do you mean, no sugar? Because <laughs> remember, the universe must have heard sugar. I changed my mindset from being against sugar to being for more energy, clarity, focus, and the numerous benefits of a sugar, low sugar diet. And I've cut back quite a bit. And some of the benefits are actually starting to show. I'm pretty sure that dark chocolate has no sugar in it. <laughs> it's interesting to experience firsthand the concept of what you resist persists. When I identified my real reason for this change, which is the benefits, I stopped resisting and found myself on a clearer, cleaner, less sugary path. And I'll tell you, back here on Sundays, that's a tough one to resist. <laughs> we feel resistance most strongly when we are about to dare greatly, and that coincides with us about to grow spiritually. We know that the universe itself, from which we are cut, is always growing, always expanding. So it makes sense that we are always growing. And we are always expanding. Knowing that, that we consciously work hard to facilitate this growth, where does this resistance come from? I've run across this idea recently. This worked for me, and I'd like to share it with you guys. There's this author, Stephen Pressfield, who postulates that when we are about to grow spiritually, there is an immediate resistance from the ego. Now, we know that truly spiritual beings, but in having this human experience, I see that we are actually two parts. Just a little bit of duality, if you will. I wanted to make sure there was no rotten tomatoes out here before we said that. I see the ego as a separate entity, one that lives in our body while we have a body. Think of this as a living, breathing, sentient being. Any kind of spiritual advancement we may undertake that is good for the soul is bad for the ego. And as we embark on this growth, the ego's naturally, naturally innate fight for survival kicks in. Very simply, it's the ego fighting for its life. And the more important an activity is to your soul's evolution, the more fear or resistance you will have to it. It's a great example of Newton's third law of equal and opposite forces. You get light and dark, up, down, yin, yang, growth, resistance. A simple way to recognize this, a simple way I recognize this is the yell buts. You know, those excuses and the reasons why you don't want to do, why you can't do what you want to do. And note that the resistance always takes form of fear. Since I've become aware of this phenomenon, it's been easier for me to recognize that it is happening and I can choose the only thing that can be done in that moment, which is ignore the yeah buts, suck it up, and bust right through it. There is scientific proof that we, our human body we, not the capital we, are hardwired for the negative, which explains a bit about why the ego acts the way it does. These studies show how and why our minds are actually wired to this thing called a negativity bias. This concept is believed to be based on our innate fight for survival way back in the days. If we didn't notice the one thing that was wrong with that beauty and bucolic serenity in the woods, it might eat us. Well, we don't live there anymore. <laughs> and I expect that there have been times when you were involved in something or did something that most people really liked. They laud you, they praise you, cover you with love, positive comments. And then there's 
there's this one person who had this one little negative content, <laughs> and that's what we remember. Mm -hmm. There's the one we go to sleep with. Yeah. Don't we just notice the dark cloud and the bright sky? Our natural tendency towards this negativity, or the dark side, is unfortunate because positive thinking, positive emotions make us smarter, more creative, and more resilient. These are things that help us cope with challenging situations. Contrast this with sustained negative moods, which drains our energy, energy and makes us feel less capable. The more we focus on problems, the more they expand to fill up our mental space which means we might not notice the solutions, even if they are within our easy reach. But now that you are aware of these things, I get turned on to this podcast called Ref You Suck. <laughs> the name was based on a recording of a crowd chanting, Ref You Suck, Ref You Suck. So that works. The NBA did a study about their professional refs and how fair or unfair their calls were. It was a really, really involved study, and a lot of other things came out of it, but this one point is, as they took into consideration how quickly they had to make these calls, how quickly they had to make a decision, and how many factors were involved, one of the interesting factors that presented itself was that there were racial biases in calling fouls, hmm. and the refs didn't even know about it. Once they became aware of this unconscious bias, they changed quickly and easily, and that pretty much went away. I think we can agree that this kind of unbiased, unbiased uh, this unconscious bias is created by lifetimes, really, of race consciousness, yeah? I'm actually taken with how quickly the refs change their mind. Just a little bit of awareness, a little bit of desire, we can do that too. Once we become aware of what might be different, with a little bit of awareness and a little bit of a desire, can't we change what we're doing? Can't we become more about what we're thinking and how we prefer to act or prefer to be? Simple. Right? Simple, right? Well, it could be. What do you mean no? Because when you say no, you're dimming your light, your natural light. And I know some of you have probably heard this, but I think this is great. I've got the microphone. I'm going to read it to you. <laughs> Marianne Williamson says, It is our light, not our darkness, that it most frightens us. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant and gorgeous and talented and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. You are, your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightening about shrinking so other people won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. And it's not just in some of us. It's in all of us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. What do you mean, no? I skipped a spot. There are times in the past when I would be asked to play something on the piano, and I automatically said no. What did I mean? I don't know. There's a lot of reasons. I won't go into that right now. I was saying yes to fear, uncertainty, lack of confidence. I was feeling small. I was saying yes to an inner script that I had built up over 50 years. That makes me sound old, doesn't it? That's a long time. I've uncovered a few of those reasons, and I won't go into those at that time. And it was a lot of it had to do with the work here at the center. I've accepted the fact that I have 
some sort of gift that people enjoy, so now I've changed to TS. I say yes to sharing. I say yes to June. I say yes to bonding. I'm honoring the requester. I'm saying yes to letting my light shine. That light, by the way, which has nothing to do with me, I'm just carrying it around for a few years. So remember, what do you mean no? Or are you really saying yes to something else? Something in the past, deep-seated fear? Do you even know why? Start saying yes to what it is that serves you. You are a light here on purpose. I'm reminded of Howard Thurman's quote, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do that. Because that's what the world needs, is people who have come alive. Sharing what gift we have, and we all have one, is one of the reasons we're here. What do you mean, no? I know you really mean yes. So say it with me. Yes. 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 Thank you. <laughs> so, yes, that was wonderful. That's talking about living your life out loud. Yeah. We're sure. And you know, I, I've, I've said this so many times before, and I'll say it again. I just, I just love how everything lines up. I mean, you know, not a coincidence that I picked that book and talked about affirmations and about not using negative affirmations. I mean, and it came right in with the talk. Let's give him another hand. That was a great talk. Straight, straight science of mine. I love it. Thank you.